Bianca, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's really a pleasure to be here today with you. Your work is all related to justice. Why is justice so important to you? Well, I, I was born in Nicaragua under a dictatorship, the dictatorship of the Somoza that was involved for 39 years. And I watch um, the, uh, the way the oppression of the people of Nicaragua throughout my childhood and adolescence. And as well, I saw Nicaragua and I saw justice and injustice to the prisma of my mother's eyes. And uh, I, my mother was a very, very political and very committed uh, woman. And, uh, and I also saw her being discriminated because of her gender, because she had to work and because uh, she was a woman and because she was divorced. And so through my mother as well, I learned um, what it was, uh, how a, a society could really repress and discriminate a woman. And, and I think that by watching what the dictatorship and the brutal uh, Somoza dictatorship did to the citizens of Nicaragua, and by watching how my mother was discriminated, uh, made me feel that I needed to commit my life to defending women, to defending um, those who are persecuted, and uh, and to fight for democracy, for the rule of law, and for the right of women and girls. Yeah. So uh, I think that it's, it's very simple, and, and a lot of people uh, don't seem to understand, really. They think that, um, that they don't see the connection between human rights, uh, climate change, justice, um, the environment, all of it is connected. It's, 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 it's a, uh, we have to see it through, through a prisma of one. It's a one, uh, especially now, I think, with the coronavirus, we realize uh, really how important it is that we look at the bigger picture, not that we try to compartmentalize and to think that uh, the rights of women or that the environment or that justice um, that th those are not part of justice. Those are all part of justice. And I think that is the reason why uh, my foundation um, that may seem to some people uh, that has engaged and that campaigns for different issues, uh, I always come back to uh, the, the fact that they are all connected to that we must fight for justice. Mm -hmm. I think it would be wrong to talk about justice today without mentioning Ruth Bader Ginsburg because we all woke up to, to the news that the Supreme Court Justice died. Um, how did you feel hearing that? Because she was obviously such a huge advocate for women's rights like you are. Are you, are you concerned about the Supreme Court going forward? You know, I, 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 was, I, I was doing my hair and getting ready when I learned about her death. Mm. And, and, and I put a tweet in a hurry to say how deeply saddened I am because she was a true champion of ju justice. Uh, she is one of the most extraordinary women. And the idea that we lose her at this moment in time when it's so critical and it is so critical of who will be the president in the United States. We already had justice um, from the Supreme Court that were nominated by, by uh, Donald Trump. And, and we know uh, that it was a, a tremendous uh, controversy about who he elected and, and judges at all level. Uh, so I am so saddened uh, to think that we have lost her and that who will replace it. Uh, she is irreplaceable. It will be very difficult to have a, a justice, so the Supreme Court justice, uh, like her. Um, it, it, again, I hope that it exists, but I, I put her uh, together with, um, with my great heroes, you know, great women here. Um, I'm deeply sad and deeply sorry. Yes, I completely agree. She's definitely irreplaceable. Um, on the topic of justice, there are obviously a lot of different ways to fight for justice. And despite being an environmental campaigner yourself, you were recently quite vocal about some of the acts of Re Extinction Rebellion, particularly their choice to block newspaper printing sites. Can you tell me why you felt so passionately about that? I agree with 
many of the issues that uh, they are struggling for. Uh, perhaps um, I want to be very clear why I felt that perhaps they made a mistake about um, uh, trying to um, put an obstacle to the release of the uh, the printing of the newspaper. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm coming from, from Nicaragua, from a country where freedom of the press and freedom of speech is at, at stake, where at the moment you have uh, Canal 12 that has been embargo, that you have many of the important newspapers in Nicaragua, like, um, you know, Carlos Fernando Chamorro and, and Confidencial and, and 100% news in Nicaragua that have been closed, journalists that have been killed, journalists that have been put in jail. Uh, so I think, and it's what I say freely, the, the headlines for me was that freedom of the press is sacrosanct. In no way, of course, I support what the government is saying that they will go after them and that they are, um, and that they committing crime. Not at all. I mean, you know, people can make a mistake. I was only speaking from my perspective, but what their objective is and their concerns about uh, that the environment is an, an existential threat. I totally agree because I think that governments have failed us. Governments throughout the world, including the government in the UK, um, in, in not taking the right measures and not really um, preventing catastrophic climate change. I, I think that we have seen in the last a uh, few months uh, beside the pandemic, you know, the, the melting of the ice. We are seeing what is happening today um, all over the world and what will, and, and, and these devastating fires in the US, in, in, in Brazil, and in many other countries that the media are not focusing. Yes, we must, and we need to take radical actions uh, to, um, to uh, get the attention of the media, to get the attention of government, and to get them to adopt the right measures to prevent uh, catastrophic climate change. But I feel very strongly that we must be very careful when we take measures that put in danger freedom of the press, even if the press, as they are right to say, is biased sometimes and is not telling us what we need to know about the environment, about Brexit, about uh, COVID-19, uh, which is the case in this country. But despite that, uh, we need to have freedom of the press mm. and freedom of expression. You said that we do need radical action in some circumstances. Of course, Extinction Rebellion's whole philosophy is about civil disobedience to push their agenda. Do you think breaking the law is necessary to get the climate crisis taken seriously? Civil disobedience is an important um, aspect of, of, um, of campaigning um, to get um, the uh, the attention of governments and to let governments know that um, that what they their policies are wrong. For example, uh, whether we're talking uh, with regards to the environment or Black Lives Matter or Indigenous people's lives matter is important. And sometimes we need to take radical measures for them to pay attention and. Uh, uh, Obviously, I will never support anything that is violent. I will always believe in peaceful, uh, in, in peaceful objection. I will always believe in, in peaceful uh, movements like the movement in Nicaragua, the movements we have seen in other parts of the world, in India. Um, I am a great fan of Gandhi and believe, uh, and believe in, the, in the power of, of peaceful movement, of peaceful, peaceful resistance. Mm, yes, yeah, very interesting. On the topic of kind of law breaking, I wanted to speak a bit about our government at the moment. There have been widespread concerns that the British government is attempting to break international law to push its Brexit plans. What do you make of our government? I think it's appalling. I think that we have heard um, voices of great jurists, of great important um, politicians, you know, that most of the former prime minister have come out and condemned the actions of uh, Boris Johnson. 
I think he's completely wrong. Uh, the UK is supposed to stand for the rule of law. We are losing uh, credibility. We are losing respect throughout the world. And this will not end well. I mean, I, of course, have been very vocal against Brexit. I think that um, that Brexit is uh, that how they are managing uh, Brexit and the negotiation, just like how they are managing um, COVID-19 uh, is being shambolic, to say the least. So I am very concerned. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.